Holy Spirit this morning to, to go onto my computer, my inbox, and look at some prophetic uh, statements, uh, you know, declarations, some words from the women's of glow up in the foothills. And, uh, and God is doing powerful things through their glow. And uh, they have been instrumental in, in helping us. You know, the, the prophetic revelation brings forth the move of God. And I was seeing some things, and, and uh, oh man, and, and it just it, it dawned on me that what I'm talking about today is in concert even with what uh, some of these ladies have helped to birth out. And I tell you, there's power in intercession and in prayer, and God is about ready to, to reveal some new things in, in this body, I believe this generation, and he's told me to, to, uh, to call this word today heavenly strategy. Heavenly strategy. So we invite you, Holy Spirit. We just yield everything to you. We pray that your anointing, your grace would just flow like a river. That we would have ears to hear everything you want us to hear, Lord. We pray that, uh, that people would be edified. That you would just uh, instill, establish in, in us this greater revelation that you're bringing us all into, and we give you the glory in the name of Jesus. And so, I, mean, I don't know about you, but now, I, I believe that now more than ever, there is a need for the, for the strategy of the kingdom of heaven to be revealed to the church. Anybody think there's a, there's a need for that? Oh yeah. Oh yeah, praise the Lord. And, and the Lord is really dealing with me about these uh, strategic uh, revelations that he's releasing uh, that it must be revealed through prayer. How many is willing to start praying a little more even than you're already on? Yeah. Please hear me. We need we need these this this, uh, this revelation, these strategies, if you will, to overcome you know the the acceleration of the enemy's attack upon uh, the church in this day. You know, trying to. Keep the heavens closed, trying to rob us from our inheritance and, and, and all those things God's calling us to do. And we need these things. And the good news, the good news is that Revelation chapter 5 verse 8 reveals that there are heavenly bowls. Heavenly bowls. In that somewhere up there in heaven, there are heavenly bowls that are filled and being filled with incense. And these are the prayers of the saints. How many believe that some of our prayers may be in those in those bowls? Yeah, and I believe this is good news as well that uh, the, these levels of these bowls, the incense, these prayers, these odors rising up into the heavenly realm are now uh, you know higher than ever before. Anybody believe that? And I believe that these things are uh, about ready to spill out into the realm of the earth. And the Lord's put it in my heart to really, uh, we've hit this uh, not too long ago prayer, but to really go after it. I mean, go after it. Like our life depended on it, right? We, 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 can't, uh, we can't afford to relax. I don't know about you, but every time I've had a breakthrough and I've relaxed, the enemy come around the back door or some other way and, 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 and try to trip me up. But I'm telling you, we can, we can keep those... Those, uh, those doors of the enemy closed and we can push them back with prayer. And so now more than ever, we need these bowls to overflow into the church, into the world. And uh, not only do we need this to maintain the revelations that we've already got, uh, but we also need this to empower us to, to enter into more territory. Anybody want to go into some more of your destiny with the Lord? And so... I tell you, these, these strategies, they empower you to take back, you know, those, those gates. Take possession of the gates that the enemy is in, has been in possession of. And I tell you, I need a little more uh, freedom, a little more liberty in my life. And, and God is bringing, it, he's bringing us into it. If we'll just let him take us into these places, it's, it's a done deal. It's an imminent thing. What we're talking about is something that God is revealing today in the days ahead that is imminent as we are in this last hour. We are in this last days, are we not? We know the prophetic timeline. We don't know the hour, but we know the season. And so, hallelujah. 
So please hear this. I believe this is a prophetic declaration today. There is some new revelation strategy, heavenly strategy that's coming to life in the church, in the ecclesia, in the days ahead. But not only uh, will this reveal the eternal victory, I mean, it's eternal that we have in Christ, but this revelation will also empower us to live as sons, daughters of God. I mean, this is, this is above where we, you know, we've been living in the world in the past, you know, we know what it's like. God is calling us into this realm. And uh, where we're joint heirs, ruling right. and reigning. And, and so, how many would like to see more of that? Yeah. Do we think that we've seen the full measure? No. Oh man, we're just we're just tapping into, into some of it right now. And, uh, and this revelation, this strategy of heaven is, is a revelation of the King of Kings as he now is. As he now is being revealed. Okay, this is a big deal, I tell you. And so let's start building on this. If you have your Bibles, open to uh, Revelation chapter 5. Here, John the Revelator is, is, is uh, revealing some things that he got to see when he was in that spiritual realm where we all have access to. Praise the Lord. We thank you for the Word of God. Holy Spirit, we pray that you would just open this Word up. Thank you, Lord. Everybody there, Revelation 5, verse 1. I'm just going to read a few verses here. And it says, And I saw in the right hand of him that sat on the throne a book written within and on the backside, sealed with seven seals. Oh, man. And I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, Worthy is a... Who is worthy? Excuse me. Who is worthy to open the book and to loose the seals thereof. And it says, no man in heaven nor on earth, either under the earth, was able to open the book, neither to look thereon. How many would like to get a glimpse of what was on that book on the outside even? Yeah. <laughs> I'd like to get into there. And uh, oh man, so this is this is a big deal. And, and it goes on to say, verse four, and I wept much because no man was found worthy to open and to read the book neither to look thereon. And how many believe when he wept, he really wept? Amen. Okay, and one of the elders said unto me, weep not. Let's hear this. Because behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah. Hallelujah. Say that again. The lion, the lion of the tribe of Judah. Amen. All right. This is who is worthy to open this book. The root of David has prevailed to open the book and to loose the seven seals thereof. And so God has got revelation that no eye has seen, no ear has heard for you, just waiting for you. The Holy Spirit is, 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 uh, is just waiting for you to follow after him because there is a shift, there is a, a season that he's revealing, that he's leading us into. Oh man, and, 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 and praise the Lord, this is uh, Jesus' breakthrough, is our breakthrough. He's, he's leading us into these breakthroughs. And, and I would suggest to you that there is a fuller revelation that's coming of, of, you know, in regards to the King of Kings that we have only had a glimpse of. Okay, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Is it stirring anybody a little bit today? Yeah. All right, and so, and so it goes on to say, and, and I beheld and lo, in the midst of the throne, and of the four beasts, and in the midst of the elders stood a lamb, as it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent forth into all the earth. We've been talking about that a little bit. How many believe those eyes are flowing through here, going to and fro, looking for those hearts who will be perfect toward him so that he can sow himself strong on their behalf? I'm telling you, he is here. The Holy Spirit's here. Jesus, he sees what's going on. Amen. Nothing can hide from the word of God. Is that the truth? Is he's here and I, Lord, we want to be part of that group. Help Amen. us, Lord. Yes. yes. Hallelujah. And so, and so it says, and he, he came and he took the book out of the right hand of him that sat upon the throne. And, and when he had taken the book, the four beasts and the four and twenty elders fell down and 
before the Lamb, having every one of them harps, and hear this, golden vials full of odors or incense, which are the prayers of the saints. Okay? And it says they sung a new song. And I tell you, people are starting to sing a new song. It's already breaking forth. Anybody believe that? Just look around the world but in other ministries. It's breaking out. They sung a new song. Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof, for thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to God by thy blood out of every kindred tongue and people and nation. And hear this. And has made us, as you, unto our God, kings and priests, Hallelujah. and we shall reign on the earth. That's, that's the word of God. Yeah. Oh, man. And this is going to come, please hear me, as this revelation starts to unfold in the days ahead. And there are things that have been laid up for centuries that people have been wanting to get a hold of that we have the privilege of tapping into or being led into. We can't get in these areas by ourselves. We have to be led by the Holy Spirit. And so, praise God. God is up to something. And we have been experiencing a, 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 a new growth season in our groups. Praise the Lord, His groups. And, uh, and there really is a momentum. And I, I believe He wants to see that momentum increase. How many want to see it increase? Hallelujah. And so, I'm telling you, it's going to take the strategy the strategy of the kingdom of heaven following upon the church, upon all of us to bring this to bring this about. It's going to take it. And and uh, hear what it says in 1 John 3, 1. 1 John 3, 1, um, this ties in with what we're talking about. The Lord says, add this into your notes. It says in, in 1 John 3, 1, if you're following with your Bibles, behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. Oh, what a privilege it is to be a daughter or a son of God. It's a holy thing, right? He's called us into his fellowship, his circle of light, right? Love, and we're not to relate. And we've been talking about this to one another after the flesh, but after the spirit. And we've been all been given this ability to be able ministers of the gospel, all of us. Hallelujah. And it goes on to say that we should be called sons of God. Therefore, the world knows us not because it knew him not. Man, that's what it does. It, it, it transforms you out of the world and into the kingdom, right? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Beloved, now we are the sons of God and it does not yet appear what we shall be. How many believe there's some things that has not yet appeared that God wants to transform us into, into the image of the Son of God, you know, through the knowledge, right? Okay? And uh, so it does not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when He, Jesus, the King of glory, appears, we shall be like Him, for we shall see Him as He is. Praise the Lord. Oh man, I'm telling you, there's something there that God is telling me to to key in on today because there is a, a coming revelation of who he is that's going to transform you. It's going to empower you right. to enter into, into uh, your your promised land, your destiny, and we need this revelation. Yeah. We need it because the enemy is waging war again against the saints. And, and God has got something that he's releasing in this last hours that nobody, not any generation before has seen, uh, is laid up for these last days. And it's going to be more than able to overcome the, 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 uh, all the wickedness that is mounting up in the world. Anybody think we need to see this? We need to see it like, you know, we got to be ready. And so, as he is, so are we in the world. That says that also in, in, in the First John 4, 18, I believe. That last part of that verse, but but my question is, will we be in position? Okay, he's telling me, he says, get them ready, get ready. Okay, this is a prophetic word. Believe it. I'm telling you, uh, uh, 
Will we be ready to receive this revelation of our 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 King of you know of glory when it comes? Anybody want to be ready? Yes. Will we be will we be daring enough to embrace it when it comes? And I tell you, this is this you know people might miss this. I have missed things. I have missed past moves of God because I was not in the right place, and uh, I don't want to miss anything else. And I'm just being transparent, you know. We're all vulnerable to miss things, but the Lord revealed to me that the ones who's going to be in position, please hear me, the ones who are going to be empowered to recognize, to embrace with confidence even these, these revelations, these strategic revelations of our Lord. Please know that when you see Him as He is, it brings to life, into operation, what he has done in you. Man. I mean, that's how powerful this is. And, and so he's desiring to pour this out upon this generation. And the ones who are going to be in position to see and receive are the ones who are going to be praying. I'm not saying that others won't, but I know the ones who are praying, these are the ones. How many want to be part of that? Yeah. And, uh, and so... He's calling us corporately into deeper levels, into deeper waters, because, you know, he wants to bring us into more, to release more of the kingdom. And it's going to be out of the box. I'm telling you, it's going to be different from, from things that we have seen in the past, even now that's going on in many places. It's going to be different. And uh, he doesn't just want to take a few. He wants to take the whole bunch of us. The whole bunch of us into these deeper waters. Who wants to go into the deep? The word was deep is crying out to deep. Right? Man. Anybody willing to pay the price? Offer the sacrifice of prayer? What a small price we got to pray. Just to talk to our Lord and love him. And let him show us those things. Right? He's made it so easy. We can't do it. We can't put our hands on these things. There's nothing that we can touch with the flesh. We just quench just we just gotta we just gotta surrender to his victory and to and praise him and let God be God in us. Let him reveal who he is and let it transform us and make a way for what he's done to manifest through us. Right? Praise the Lord. So we gotta have this, we gotta we gotta pay these prices so we can see more salvations, because that's our heart. To be about the harvest and see people built up uh, to grow in their spiritual authority, which which helps others, you know, step into those good works that we're all ordained to walk in, right? And so, but we're going to have to give ourselves over to prayer to get in these deeper levels because this is where God keeps these things. They're there. Yes. And I see. Don't you don't have to turn there, but in Luke chapter five, I see a principle. You know, here that ties in with what we're talking about, where where Peter had been fishing all night, didn't catch a thing. Anybody ever done a little fishing or spiritual fishing even without catching anything? Oh man, it's kind of discouraging, and I believe they were discouraged. But he did something very smart. He gave the use of his boat, his vessel for the Lord to use as a platform to preach. Anybody vessels? Is there any vessels in here? You know? And afterwards we see that the Lord, what did he do? He directed him. Where did he direct him? Out into the deep, right? He says, launch out into the deep for a catch. And so when we give of ourselves in whatever fashion the Lord calls us to, he's always, he's always, uh, he's bringing us back an increase in, in that which we've given. That's a spiritual principle in scripture and he's got miracle catches for you. Anybody want to catch some more revelation? All right, hallelujah. So I know we did some more breakthrough. Thank you, Lord. I want to be a better fisherman of men and women, right? And so we need this. We, but it's going to take sacrifice. And yeah, maybe in prayer, it might be in all areas. I don't know. The Lord will lead you. Hallelujah. So, so please hear me. Some of you I know have stepped into much, if not a lot, of what I'm talking about today. Some of you have been matured even, but please hear me, this body needs you. More than ever, we need you because now more than ever, the enemy is coming against the church. And it's the prayer of the saints. 
that, that brings a breakthrough. That's just a simple truth. We have seen this so many times and to know that there's power in prayer. Sometimes things just don't happen without prayer, right? So, anybody uh, encouraged already? Yes. All right. That's good. Well, let me encourage you a little more because, you know, what I'm talking about, for people to enter into what I'm talking about, you you got to realize there is going to be some warfare. Yes. But know that you've been ordained for this kind of lifestyle. We are that season. You know, we are that, that generation. The whole body of Christ has been has 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 been re received a new man inside, right? And we're talking about this. We've got the ability to know without a shadow of doubt through the kingdom, the kingdom of God, which is a power operating within us and upon us to do all things through Christ who strengthens us, right? And we are ordained uh, into these good works, and we all have the potential to step into what I'm saying. And so you can't look at, at who you used to be. That, that person is, is no longer alive. You have a new identity in Christ, right? And he's trying to lead you into more of this revelation of who you are in him as he is being revealed in this generation. Please hear me. He is being revealed as the king of kings. All right. Hope this is helping somebody here. And it's going to take our prayers. We need each other, you know, because we are the ones who have been given the authority to rule and reign in life. We just read that in Revelation 5, right? And I can give you many other scriptures. and But the authority only comes through Christ. He's the king, right? He's the one that says, open and it shall be open or closed. And he leads us, you know, you know, he's still the shepherd of our soul. He leads us in this place. And there's, there's no, uh, there's always victory in Jesus when you follow after Jesus, wherever he's leading you. Do we believe that? Yes. I'm telling you, you gotta, you gotta have this confidence that he is the king and he's leading you in spite of what you, there's faith in you to see what I'm saying come into manifestation. And so we are, I'm telling you, this is how we got to where we are and where, you know, God is, is stretching me to go into some other things. And God stretching anybody in here to do something for the Lord? I bet, I bet he's stretching us all. Hallelujah. Thank God we have the Holy Spirit who is faithful to lead us into everything. Yes, even the deep things of God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So, hallelujah. So we've been discussing a lot of these principles here recently. Um, the rediscovering of the kingdom. Anybody hear that message? If you didn't get it, you know, get it out in the hall. Uh, there's keys. There's real keys of the kingdom we've been talking about. <clears throat> but today, I think this is another key. Because it's prayer that brings these things into view and into, into possession and into operation. We need prayer. And we need the... We need spiritual intercessors like we we have never seen. It's going to, we need a big time because it's on. Yeah. It's on. At the moment the word of God, you know, is released, the enemy is trying to if you can't keep it from you know growing in your spirit, he's going to try to choke it out. Mm -hmm. But it's on. We, but we've been given the victory, and we got to step into the position and start using uh, our prayer language and, and, and everything God leads us into it. So, so today obviously is a, um, a spiritual warfare message and back in the 90s there was a, 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 a term coined by the church called strategic level warfare. Anybody ever hear of that? And just know that, that Jesus right now is releasing some new strategic revelation that's going to bring you into the position to displace uh, uh, you know, these enemy forces at a higher level than ever before. And, and so this is what this is about today. And, uh, and uh, I tell you, so this is just touch on, on some of the battleground of the church, if you will. You know, there's so much that we have to pray about in the future, but, but we're starting. But first off, just realize that other churches, other born-again congregations is not our enemy. 
And sometimes it's it's hard, you know. It's easy to lose sight of this, you know. It's, but but in spite of, of what we have to face, or or we hear, or or things are coming against us, we have to we got to war through prayer against the facades of the enemy that's trying to bring division, is trying to, to instill fear and doubt and unbelief, right, and contention and and all kinds of stuff. That is none of that is from God, right? And yet it's 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 existing in in places, and we gotta look in the mirror ourselves and make sure, you know, God is he's he's cleaning us up, all of us. And uh, I tell you, and just know that in John seventeen twenty verses, uh, uh, John seventeen verses twenty through twenty three, that Jesus, there's a picture of him eternally praying for your union with the Lord, your one ship with the Father and with Him. And know that the, that's what the enemy is warring against. You know, he, he does not want you to, to come into one with him. And the enemy is relentless on this. If he can make you double-minded, you know, he can defeat you. we got to be one with Jesus, right? And I'm telling you, <laughs> he knows that if we become one with Christ and through him start operating in love and unity with one another, that it's just a matter of time. That, that this church that God, that Jesus is establishing, is going to wake up and, and rise up and tear down all these yeah. gates and take possession. It's just a matter of time. And what I'm saying, this is imminent. This is coming. And he's calling us into our position now. And we need everybody. He needs you. And we need each other. I'm telling you, we do. And so, hallelujah. But again, will we recognize, you know, Jesus, this, this, this new unveiling of Jesus, you know, when he appears, these deeper revelations, there's a fuller revelation. So, so turn with me to Joshua chapter five, if you have your Bibles, and we're going to touch on this because there's some, there's some prophetic pictures here. There's some parallels in scripture and God is He's showing these things. The scenes in the Old Covenant were for our example, right? And, uh, and here, realize that the name Jesus, you know, is, is significant. The name that the Father gave the Son of God, Jesus, is significant. Okay? And uh, it's the Greek form of uh, Yeshua or Joshua in the Hebrew. It is, is Yeshua, Joshua. Who, as as you're, we're going to we're going to see here, some of you, most of you know this. He was a Hebrew general who led God's people, the nation of Israel, into their promised land, into warfare, into victory, right? And and so I, the Lord has been really dealing with me on this. He says, in order for there to be a greater revelation, we need to be prepared. Uh, you know, prepare, be prepared for these greater revelations, for greater victories in, ahead. But to have these these revelations, we need to to have a, a greater revelation of Jesus. Okay, I hope I said that right. But you know, I'm not saying you don't have one already. I know we have a revelation of him. Okay, but I'm telling you, when 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 I'm talking about manifest, it can sweep nations. It can it can. It can, it, can, it can impact cities, communities. There's been hints of revival that have broken out, that just wiped out sin and just all kinds of ungodliness because somebody tapped in through prayer and got a revelation, some revelation of what we're talking about. And uh, I don't see some of that happening in the city, so that tells me there's, there's room for more, right? And so he's going to release this. And... Uh, so I'm not saying you don't have a revelation, but I'm, I'm just humble enough to say I need a greater revelation of Yeshua, Jesus. Okay? And uh, hallelujah. And we need to start seeing him as he will be revealed in these last days. And that is a holy warrior. Okay? Who is dressed in battle array. How many has got a glimpse of some of that, you know? And the, the Lord's tell me that the problem is that so many are looking at the church in its current position and, and, and missing the revelation that he's trying to lead us into. 
Okay, and unless we see him as he is being revealed, you know, we might not recognize him. That's right. Okay, yeah. and that's a, that's a real possibility. And, uh, and so here's a revelation, I believe, for the church. It's when we see him as he truly is being revealed, it's then that we can truly follow him. Yeah. Amen. Because it's only, only when we see him as he is being revealed, you know, in the spiritual realm, in the realm of glory, that we are transformed into this image, which makes a way uh, for him to manifest through us yeah. in everything that he has done to come into operation through us. Right. we got to see this is the power of seeing Jesus as he is being revealed. Yeah. Okay. Joshua 5.13, and here it is. It says, And it came to pass when Joshua was by Jericho, that he lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, hey, there was a man over against him with his sword drawn in his hand. Oh, man, what would you do if you saw somebody with a sword drawn? Okay, and Joshua went unto him and said unto him, Art thou for us or for our adversaries? And, and who is this that he's addressing here? This is the Lord. And he didn't recognize him. Joshua, who had a knowledge of God, did not recognize Jesus in this form. Right? Oh, man. I don't know about you, but I've been discovering that there is just something about those times that are just prior to a move of God that can cause us to wonder, you know, is God in this? I miss it, is, uh, you know, you know what I mean? And uh, and I tell you, for many in this generation, uh, you know, when he's revealed, it might seem a little bit too confrontational for them when he's revealed as this warrior. It might seem a little too different for them, too intense from the one that we have learned to trust. Is that, is that a real possibility? Okay, so God's trying to get us ready here, because I believe he's, he's leading us down this path. And please hear me, just as the Lord stood before Joshua with his sword drawn, he's here with us. He's here right now in our midst through the Holy Spirit. Anybody believe that he's here? Yeah. I'm telling you, he is. He's calling us to follow him. Okay, maybe somebody might feel like the sword is pointing towards you, you know, straight at your heart even. And uh, but let me reassure you, God is for you. He's for us, I'm telling you. In fact, it's his, his desire, his intent to, 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 to release that sword right into your heart, which is the word of God, you know, so that your words can, can release his authority. We need that piercing, don't we? And so, so when this starts to happen, it's already started. Whatever you do, don't don't withdraw. You know, don't don't freak out. You know, this the, the power of God, the kingdom manifesting, can be overwhelming. It can take you back a little bit. Is that right, sister? You but you don't know what's happening to you. This is you become another person. Okay, all right. I'll let, yeah. I just have to say this. Um, okay. This is how wonderful God is and losing everything and all. And God spoke to me and I'm in this account. And I'm so excited. Yeah, I'm not going to find it later. I'm sorry. Um, Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Jesus. This is what came to me. Okay. We're losing everything. Uh huh. That you have all things. And wow. I just, in here, in, in my mind, I feel like, you know, didn't have anything. I've lost everything my home, my car. Now I'm here, I'm here, and can say this. You have all things. And I thought, oh my God. Amen. Oh, yeah. man. I'm telling you, and that's, uh, that's, that's what the awesome. Lord says. Yeah, I'm sorry. That's, that's good. That's awesome. He said that. I just, yeah, so I, maybe I just want to listen. I just mm -hmm. oh my gosh. Yeah. yeah. So. It's so true. I'm telling you, you got to get to that place where you yield everything, you give everything to Him, so that you can tap into what we're talking about. Yeah. 
And I know of people that are really tapping into this kingdom that has been promised. Praise the Lord. So that's what we're about. And when you tap in, there's no devil that can shake that foundation under you because that you've got the kingdom. That's your foundation. Jesus, the rock, right? Hallelujah. So, so whatever you do, do not be terrified at this unveiling of the Son of God, Jesus, because he is, in fact, right now, fitting you for battle. Yes. Hallelujah. Okay, he is, I'm telling you, and I believe this is another prophetic word today. And please uh, realize that it's at the time of those revelations, of those of the revelations of him, that, that when we see him, that it's at that time that we are being fitted, you know, when we have been equipped even to overcome. That's just how quick it comes when you see it, okay? And But you don't know this until you step into it and, and, and you find out that, hey, something's really happened to your life. A lot of people, they've been exposed to things and until they step into the, the truth and trust, in the name of Jesus, they don't see that power manifest. How many has stepped into what we're talking about? Hallelujah. Many people have. Thank you, Lord. How many have been in a wilderness experience? Lots of them. Lots of them. <laughs> and some guy's raising his hands and his feet back there. Yeah. <laughs> and so realize that the process of fitting and battle just doesn't begin when you become fully matured. But it begins at new birth. I'm telling you, and this is the process through which we become mature, right? And uh, I tell you, God's telling me, be realistic with your current state of being. We need to be completely realistic with where we are. Yeah. Okay? And he's going to lead us into that kingdom state of being and establish that reality. What is it? You know, the kingdom of God is righteousness joy and what peace in the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. And uh, the Lord told me that much in this generation, much of the church has been just a little bit too pampered. And a lot of people are not disciplined about their faith to go after what God has put on the table for them. You got to go after these things like your life depend upon because it is your life. Yes. And uh, we can't, you know, you can't really afford to, to step back. You know, you, if you step back or if you wait, you're waiting, you know, the Lord's way up there, you become vulnerable. you got to stay under the protection of his canopy, right? And how many has been, a uh, you know, exposed? Oh, man, yeah, I know what that's all like. And uh, so I tell you, so we need to be awakened to this, this day of warfare that is unfolding before us. And, uh, and we need to be equipped. Okay, for this raging uh, assault that the enemy is releasing upon the church, upon the world. And please hear this, Isaiah 42, 13, it reveals that the Lord will go forth like a mighty warrior. Okay, he's going to stir up his zeal like a man after war. This is going to happen. He's going to, he's going to utter a shout. He's going to raise a war cry and he is going to prevail against the enemies and, and he's called us to to step into uh, joint heirs you have to be a joint heir with him to rule and reign and he's going to do much of this through the church there's a climatic end where he's going to there's going he's going to come but before that happens there's going to be a revelation of, of jesus as he as he currently is coming to the church anybody believe that yes oh man so let's look at this isaiah 42 13 it says the Lord shall go forth as a mighty man. This is what they were expecting in his first advent. And he shall stir up jealousy like a man of war. He shall cry, yea, roar, like a what? Like a lion, right? He shall prevail against his enemies. And look what it says in verse 14. He says, I have long time holding my peace. People are just getting too relaxed. Because nothing else, everybody seems to be getting away with all this stuff, even in the church. But it says, I have been still and I have refrained myself. Now, I, I don't know when this has happened, but now it says, I will cry like a travailing woman. 
and I will destroy and devour at once. And know that he's a loving God. He's a, he's a, he's a God of love and peace. But there is this day that's coming. Okay? And it's not, you know, I mean, there's a, there, everything he does is a, it is a law. But in the, there is this day that's coming. And, uh, I mean, many of us have known the Lord as, as our Savior and Lord, right? And please realize that these revelations of the Lord are no less true in this in the light of what we're talking about here today, but uh, he is still the same shepherd, you know, the same one that died and paid the price, atoned for us on the cross, and yet he is going to appear uh, startlingly different from the way many may expect him to appear in these last days. Does anybody believe that? And uh, I tell you, it can take you back when you see the kingdom manifest a little bit. And some of you know what I'm talking about. Um, but, um, you know, Joshua, we saw that he was somewhat taken back, right? And, uh, you know, on those plains of Jericho, and, as, and just as he was taken back, some of our concepts, some of our main, our mindsets might be shaken up a little bit when, when, he, when he's revealed. And that's okay, right? Yes. And looking at Joshua... Realize that he had already known the Lord in some form, right? No doubt, as he was in the wilderness, God was tabernacling with the people, with him, with Moses, caring for them in the wilderness. But as he was caring for them, this is what he would have me share with you, he was preparing them. He was testing them, okay? He was seasoning them, you know, for this new season that he was desiring to lead them into. And just standing before Joshua, there was a new revelation of the Lord as a captain, the Son of God appeared in, in, in person as a captain of the Lord of hosts to lead the armies into their promised land, into victory, right? And realize this is the foreshadow of what he's doing. You know, the captain of the Lord of hosts is, is here through the Spirit and he's desiring to lead you, lead all of us individually, corporately, into the kingdom of heaven to bring into manifestation the kingdom of God in the realm of the earth. Amen. Hallelujah. So, so I tell you, these people might be initially, they might have been taken back a little bit at this revelation, but both Joshua and, uh, and those people, they were more prepared for battle than they realized. Anybody had a wilderness experience? Yeah, because it was it was through this time that they were conditioned to take their possession. Hallelujah. And through our seasons of wilderness, you know, that we've been conditioned, uh, you know, we're, we've been conditioned for some things, right? God is leading us into some new places. I, I believe there's a, there's a season that we're entering into and realize that the wilderness is not, uh, it's not necessarily a time of punishment for people, but it's a time of pre preparation development, if you will, you know, to establish that foundation that cannot be shaken. Amen. I mean, the, the, the foundations of the world are being shaken. And in almost every sector of society right now, you can look and see there's a great shaking going on. But when he establishes us and we pass those tests, you know, we're not going to be shaken by what's going on on the outside. Is that the truth? Yeah. Right. And so... Hallelujah. So God is there. He's given us a, a, a foundation that cannot be shaken in spite of all this fear that the enemy is trying to unleash on the world. And in spite of those leaders of the land and even spiritual leaders have, who have been disobedient, uh, contrary to God's will, you know, in spite of all those, there are people who have not been shaken but have been strengthened. Okay, and I believe there God is assembling, He's raising us up. Anybody believe this? Yes. Hallelujah. So Hallelujah. So please realize that before Jesus returns, those who have passed these wilderness tests, they're going to receive another revelation. Christ will be revealed as a captain of the Lord, Lord of hosts. And he's here right now to lead us into that revelation.
And I'm just willing to say, yes, Lord. And we're going to do our best to keep the enemy out and let the Spirit have full reins yeah. in our services and what he wants to do. Yeah. And, uh, and so that's, that's part of, uh, you know, my contention is just to give no place to the enemy, but to let the Lord have full reign. We can't touch these things with the flesh. And, uh, and, and God's saying he's up to something. So, hallelujah. I know we all want to be part of that group. So let me just start to close here. And I want to encourage some people here, you know, just to start taking some real time. Get together in your homes. Uh, we're going to come together corporately. Come here. If you can, get here a little early and help us pray before the services. This place is open to us at 3 o'clock. And help us pray a little bit. I'm telling you, those ladies got going this morning. And before the service even started, the fire of the Lord was all in that place in, in, up in Valley Springs this morning. Prayer brings God. And uh, and God is about ready to do some new things. Hallelujah. And we got to come against these strongholds. One of the greatest ones that I think should be a prayer agenda is, is the love of God. We got to come against the stronghold that the enemy has been allowed to establish in the church, which keeps us cold toward one another. And, and I'm telling you, that's a big, you know, I mean, we should be uh, growing in love, and we are. We're starting to, and, and we should be coming softer, and the glory should start shining more. You know, we should even be more visible, more daring to go out. And do these things that God's leading us into. But I tell you, there in a lot of places, and I'm looking in the mirror, you know, there has been a lot of discrimination. There's been some judgment. Uh, you know, uh, uh, people are less vulnerable, less available. And, and these are strongholds that the enemy has been allowed to establish. And we just got to start praying. And it's the love of God that's going to break down these barriers. And it's the peace of God that's going to bond us together. Hallelujah. And so, so I don't know, maybe somebody might feel for whatever reason that they haven't really done much for the kingdom. Maybe you haven't stepped in the area of your calling. Maybe it's prayer even. Uh, but let me encourage you with this. Jesus talks about the parable, you know, where those people that toil in the last hour receive the same wages as those who have worked the whole day. Isn't that awesome? So I hope that encourages somebody. It encourages me. He, you know, he's willing to sit. He said, just come to work. Just just give him everything you are, you know. If you're not willing to to put him first and foremost, above all, you know, then there's something that needs to be dealt with. Amen. You know, and, and just and just be willing to do that, and you'll find that you really can trust you, trust him, and he can he can do he can do a whole lot better through his grace and meeting your needs and what you thought you could do on your own. I'm telling you, that's the truth. And so, praise the Lord. I think I'll close. I thank you, Holy Spirit. I thank you for everybody here, everybody's ministry, everybody watching online, Lord. I pray that your grace would uh, just lead us into our destiny, uh, just to raise us up into our positions where we are, are, are joint heirs with Jesus. We give you the praise and the glory. In the name of Jesus. And we pray over the offerings and the tithes in here. Lord, we thank you for for your, your kingdom promises. Lord, we thank you for those open heavens. And we thank you that you are our source. And we give you the glory in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen.